This is where I've been hiding for the past couple of months. Some keen eye people might recognize this dash cluster. Um, it's in my 60. What I've been working on lately is, you know, so you've got your quad gauge sitting up here, which is your oil pressure, temperature, fuel, battery, plus three lights. I've been building another one of those, but with six gauges in there, plus warning lights, which we'll go have a look at in a minute. This piece down here is getting turned into a, a GPS setup. Um, I'm not sure which way I'm going with it, but it's going to at least have GPS coordinates. Whether I want small turn by turn, I'm not too sure yet. Then we come over to where the clock is. The clock's going to be swapped out to a boost, EGT, and clock setup. Now, I mentioned all this stuff. All this stuff is going to be fitting in the factory locations. So, obviously, that clock comes out. Another piece goes in there sort of thing. But that's where I've been hiding. We'll go inside in a minute to have a look at that. Um, haven't started on what I'm doing with the stereo system yet. I'm thinking Pi Dash sort of thing, but I don't know yet. Um... Yeah, so that's where I've been hiding. That's just the dash sort of side of things I've been working on. I mean, there's the rest of the car I've got to do, but let's go inside and have a look at what I've... Well, technically, it's built for this side because the plan is uh, the speedo's got to be moved over to here. Obviously, I've got to have my taco sitting there. Um, oops. Then I'm going to have uh, my gauge setup sitting here as well as boost EGT there, so... All the sort of instrument panels with warnings, blah, 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 are all going to be on the same side. Um, I think it'll look a little bit tidier just going from speed, taco, six gauges. You'll see in a minute how I've managed to do that. And then boost, EGT, clock. Um, still a bit curious about what I'm doing with the GPS. So I think about something related to GPS is definitely going there coordinates, heading direction, that sort of thing. So um, let's jump, I've said it three times, or going for a third time, let's go inside and have a look. All right, now that we're inside, I'll give you a quick demonstration of the gauge uh, before I start pulling things out because it's loose wires sort of just sitting in the Arduino over there. So you get a visual representation anyway before we start going into the finer details. So... Let's hope they haven't come loose so it turns on. So you can see there's a little bit of a boot up time because you're running uh, a couple of things off that one Arduino there. You know, see it booted up saying tank 60, that's my number plate. That's what the car's called. So that's all oh, coming a little bit closer, right? Eh? As you can see here, we're gonna have the fuel gauge, the oil pressure, coolant temp, trans temp, bolt, and block temp. So Quite a few different things sitting there, so two extra. Then each of them have their own warning lights. So whatever values I set them to, I think I've done from memory the coolant, trans 95, oil pressure I think 5 psi, fuel cuts in at 15 litres left, volt covers under volting, not over volting, block temp uh, I think 95, 98, somewhere around there. Can't remember, it's been a pretty long project. Uh, we'll skip down here, that's the brake warning, um, and then I've got my high beam light there, so we're not losing any of the warning lights at all. Switch up the top, so as you can see, because there's no sensors plugged in, they're sort of just, you've got electrical noise basically. Um, so that's it there, um, then I've got a switch up the top. And that switch has come loose out of the Arduino. I said that was going to have an gig in there. Now I'm going to have to hang you up for half a second. Force this bastard in there. Oh, this is annoying. So I should have been more prepared on this side. Uh, where's number two? Where is it? So it's just loose wires going into a pinhole there, so I can't see around this bloody camera. Why aren't you working? 
Oh, there we go. Right. Normally with a solar connection, it won't be that much fucking drama, but uh, with a push of that button, everything goes digital. So we've got how many litres we've got left, or what PSR we're running, and our temperatures and volt. So as I said, no sensors are plugged in, so got a little bit how's it going, and clearly it's not 10, 11 degrees here. It's a little bit warmer than that, so that's the functionality of it. Uh, we're going to unplug it because now we're going to get in a little bit of a nitty gritty sort of side of things. This, oop, get that plug out of the way. This is the prototype sort of setup. Um, I am changing it um, to something a little bit thinner. I'm making some circuit boards to go on the back. I'll get closer in that, but um, you're looking at like currently being built at 55 mil thereabouts. Um, but it's the correct size to fit into that hole. No mounting brackets yet, because um, I haven't quite finished the design of this, because as you can see in there, it's uh, a mess of absolute wires. So in regards to this one here, this is getting a circuit board made to attach straight to the displays with the multiplexer built into it. So all this wiring up to here, gone. So it's going to shrink it down quite a bit. Obviously, you've got two wires per LED. Um, in there, there's a switch as well. So you've got quite a few different things going on in there. Hence why I've got a DS15 plug sitting up there. Because that's essentially the harness. But as I said, this is all in the testing sort of phase. But it all works. It's just shrinking everything down. So that's the gauge set up anyway. It all runs off, if you haven't already noticed. And I've already mentioned an Arduino. This one here is the Arduino Mega. Um, it's a genuine Arduino because I tried one of the ones from JCAR, the Duotex or whatever they're called, and it would not program at all. Apparently, it's a common fault with the Megas, uh, the no name brand Megas that is. So it all runs off that. I had to go a Mega because I'm running six screens. Um, here comes the big wire of fucking sensors. Let's move you out of the way. Yeah, we'll cross over that, but you're running all your sensors through it all and everything as well. So, as I mentioned, multiplexer. So we've got six OLED screens. Uh, there are 128 by 64 screen in white. You may notice they were red because I've actually chucked red tint over them. Uh, help cut out some of that brightness. Um, and the rest of the gauge is going to be red in the car anyway too. So... But yeah, that's how that's run. Um, an absolute mess. So I'm using the factory fuel, uh, yeah, the fuel center, I was going to say, uh, in the car. I've got all those ohm readings for what levels and that. Um, so it runs off that one. These temp sensors here are identical, but it's also the factory temp sensor as well. So it makes life a bit simpler again. This here is my block temp. I bought that from Engine Guard. Is it Engine Guard? I'm pretty sure it's Engine Guard. Watchdog. Engine Watchdog. That's it. I bought that from them. Um, I also sent them an email asking what resistance values it is so I can test to see whether it's in working order or not. A month ago, still waiting for a reply. So that's a big fucking F on their part for getting back to their customers. So I don't have much open them but why they can't provide that information is beyond me because if you've got a watchdog installed for over a year and you're curious whether your sensors are running right because that clearly the watchdog works off the sensor so if the sensor isn't working right you're clearly not going to know what temperature it is so but they can't give me that information so i've got the resistant values off that one don't know whether it's in peak performance or not but it's calibrated to that one there that covers them so that's your trans temp, your coolant temp, your block temp. We've talked about a fuel sender. The voltage, well, it's voltage. <laughs> Simples. A little bit of a fuck around to get it to work because it's a 5 volt sort of system. Now, the oil pressure runs off this job just here. Um, it's a pressure transducer or something like that. This is a 200 PSI one. Um, just to cover my basis sort of thing. 
it works through voltage, which is good. Um, I was actually thinking of making a um, boost gauge out of this, but I'm thinking it's too bulky for the application for a boost, so I'm actually redesigning something else, future videos and shit on that one. But that's what's got to get my oil pressure. I did try a SAS oil pressure sender, and I was getting all sorts of readings. I didn't like, I then went out and bought a SAS oil pressure gauge. It was DOA. Gauge work, pressure sensor fucked. Um, they screwed straight into the factory location. So that's gonna replace the factory oil pressure uh, sender out of, the, out of the cruiser there. I'm running a 12 HT, so that'll replace that one there. It's a little bit smaller. <laughs> um, not overly expensive either. Um, so that's how all that's running. So that's basically where we're up to in the grand scheme of things with the cruiser. Uh, um, as I said, getting circuit board made for back of this so I can slim that down a little bit. I'm also getting a circuit board made to turn this absolute mess into something that plugs straight on top. And then I've just got to run my wires out to my sensors, uh, which will basically be using the factory harness for majority of it um, not too sure about the oil pressure though um, we'll have to see how that works because it doesn't work on resistance it works on voltage whereas everything else works on resistance even the voltage setup because obviously we're going 12 volt down to 5 volt because that's all the other one you can handle but that there is where I've been hiring for the past, past couple of months I've never used Arduino in my entire life before I started this project. I wanted something custom, so I sat down and started learning, basically. Um, I do have a very basic understanding of electronics and that sort of jazz, and if it comes up with an error, clearly it doesn't work. But um, that's the journey so far. Um, once I get those circuit boards here, I will... Uh, do another video of the semi-finished final and then obviously I've got to wire it on the car and possibly do that but that's a long way off that one because there's still the rest of the dash I've got to do which is hiding in the other room so um, yeah I will uh, keep us updated with this custom dash project of mine and um, I've also got one to do for a four courier because I just Bought one of them as the daily, so I'll do a boost in EGT and that, so I can be an absolute nag cunt and just wind the boost up. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm actually thinking about moving away from doing the whole guns and gauge holders into just focusing on making custom gauges for cars. So I rather enjoy this project. So yeah, hopefully you guys keen to keep an eye on what's going on and uh, cheers again.